Hello, I'm David Gauntlet in England. Uh, I've been invited to participate in a seminar by uh, Stephen Hammington of Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Australia. That's on the other side of the world. He invited me to pop over. Uh, I noticed that it was a bit far and uh, I couldn't really fit it in. So, um, it was very kind of him, of course. So I'm just participating by video instead. So you might be watching this video on YouTube at random or you might be in that seminar. In, in either case, hello. Um, I've got the information about Stephen's seminar on my phone, so I'm gonna respond to his questions. I see the seminar is called Academia as Entertainment, Audience-Centered Scholarship and Public Discourse. I like the idea of academics and researchers engaging with the broader public, with school children, with anybody who's interested, with enthusiasts, uh, with, you know, with anybody who might be paying attention. I think it's important to do that. I think it's part of an academic's responsibility to be engaging in those kind of conversations. And social media, in particular these days, like this, uh, makes it especially easy. In that sense, there's no excuse for not doing it because it's so simple. Uh, the idea of academia as entertainment, I thought, was a bit curious because I think you should try to make your message as engaging and therefore perhaps entertaining as possible in order to get the message across. Otherwise, you don't get the message across, there's no point. Um, but academia as entertainment, I, I don't do it personally as, as entertainment because uh, then your career would be just as a, a stand-up comic or whatever. Um, I do it because I've got research which I want to communicate to people, or I've got ideas that I want to communicate to people, and you can do that in an entertaining way. I wouldn't call it academia as entertainment as such, but you know. Um, so Stephen's blurb says, it's fair to say that most academics never think about their audience. In fact, very often the epitome of excellence in research involves delivering an impenetrable jargon-laden paper at a conference to 12 people and then publishing it uh, in a journal that only a handful of disciplinary experts ever read. This seminar aims to question that, da 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 da, um, reconsidering who in fact our audience is, blah blah blah. Um, I mean, that, that's quite harsh what he says there. Uh, it's the kind of thing I would say. When I see that somebody else has said it, then I think, oh, that's a bit harsh, you know. I'm not sure that uh, academics are completely oblivious to the need for public communication these days. Um, but a lot of the time, you know, most academic discussion stays within academia, doesn't really go anywhere, and people don't really make much effort to communicate their message more broadly. That's sadly true, I think. So, you know, Stephen's right. <laughs> well, done. well done, Stephen Harrington. Uh, so the questions, he's got these questions. I'll read out the questions, then I'll answer the questions, okay? Um, says here, do you think on the whole that academics do a good job of communicating about research? Uh, as I've said, not really, but there are good examples. You know, there's a smallish number of people who communicate very well. Uh, they're people who you can probably find on Twitter and they probably make YouTube videos, those kind of people. I, I like those people. Um, they also hopefully write readable books. I like books still. Um, there's, there's some of them, but there's not enough. And it's true that the majority of academics sort of don't bother or they think it's sort of not really part of their job. Um, I think that's funny because it is part of your job. It's like, you know, if you had, um, if you were running a shop and somebody wanted to buy a tin of baked beans and your attitude was, well, you know, what, what, do, you, what do you want me to do? I've, I've already set up this shop and I've stocked it with beans. And now you want me to sell them to you as well? I, was, I haven't got enough to do. That's what academics say. I haven't got enough to do already. Um, but the answer is no, it is part of what you need to do. Being an academic is different to running a baked bean shop. But uh, I hope you get the analogy. Um, <laughs> terrible to equate academia with baked bean selling. Don't, don't remember that. Forget that. Forget that. Uh, so some academics do it well, most of them sadly don't, and I think they should. It says here, in what ways are you, or not, that's me, in what ways am I, uh, or not, audience-centered in my research or teaching practice? Um, well, I think you, you do the research that you want to do because you think it's interesting. I don't think you especially do it because you think, oh, this will get an audience. 
Uh, but then, having done the research that you're interested in, I think you need to try to engage an audience. Um, so I suppose I'm saying I'm audience-centred in terms of presenting stuff. I wouldn't say I was audience-driven, because that's the point where it starts to go a bit strange if you're just researching sort of uh, I don't know, popular topics in the hope of becoming popular. That probably wouldn't really work, would it? Um, okay. Who, in fact, do you consider your audience to be, it says here. Uh, I, think, I think I mentioned that. I think it's uh, anybody who's interested. Uh, I, I like it when uh, the stuff that we produce in universities also gets watched in, in school classrooms, which is, uh, my, my stuff does, apparently. I get feedback from them. And, uh, and, and they make uh, responses on YouTube, for example. Um, so that, that's really nice. Uh, but anybody who's interested, really, and uh, for example, with my book, Making is Connecting, that was talking to a kind of crafty community as well as the geeky Web 2.0 community and uh, uh, people interested in happiness and other things. Uh, and, you know, it, 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 it did apparently get watched and responded to by a range of those people when I made videos in particular. Um, YouTube videos, I think, are a good way of connecting with people. Um, what specific strategies, says Stephen, do you employ to better connect with that audience? Uh, uh, Twitter. Twitter. Twitter is good. Um, um, putting things on YouTube, making things publicly available, uh, using accessible language, uh, which I do anyway, hopefully. I don't like jargon anyway, so it's, I couldn't use jargon if I tried because I you know, don't, don't, don't know the words. Uh, I try to put things in simple words because I think that's always good. Um, I think there's a fear in some of these questions or other questions that I get asked that maybe like uh, an academic researcher won't be successful if they use simple language or if they use clear language because we see a lot of unclear language and so is that what we're meant to be doing? I think the answer there is no. Nobody really likes that. No, no, they don't really. God knows why why they do fill up journals with impenetrable articles, as mentioned by Stephen. Um, but no one really likes that. I don't think that's going to help you get on in the world by being unclear. People like clarity. What technologies do you use to help in this communication process? I've said that already, haven't I? Twitter, YouTube, the web. I started making a website. I began my academic career in 1997, my first lecturing job when I was 26, University of Leeds, um, and I, I put I made a website then because it was a new thing. I was just experimenting with it. I didn't know what the value of the web would be at that point, but it turned out to be really valuable for for me for uh, having a kind of platform and getting recognition. That that did work for me. Uh, maybe it was easier back then because being an academic with a website was more distinctive than it is now. Uh, when everybody's got a website of some sort, but they're often not that good. It says, what institute, it says on here, what institutional or political factors impede or act as disincentives to your academic practice, your audience-centric academic practice? I don't think there, were, there really are big disincentives. It's common for younger researchers, I think, to think that uh, you know, this will be disapproved of, I shouldn't really do public engagement stuff because it's seen by them up there as being trivial and, uh, you know, a waste of time and not proper scholarship. Uh, I don't think that's really true. I think you can worry about that too much. Um, I think if you have a message which gets out there and is recognised, then that is recognition. It, it helps you in the world. People then invite you to take part in more things uh, and... You, you know, you, your reputation is going to grow in that way more than it's likely to by deliberately keeping your head down, only writing the impenetrable journal articles and doing that kind of thing, because that, that, that won't lead anywhere, uh, I would say. Um, so I don't think, I don't think there was, you know, sort of dark forces or even completely apparent forces which really stop you doing public engagement kind of stuff. I think people, people like it, really. Um, and in academic terms for promotions, that kind of thing, if you can show that you've engaged a broader public, that's actually good. So it says here, yeah. do you have any advice for other 
particularly early career academics, that will help them to better reach out to their audience. Well, um, I would just say don't be afraid of using social media, online tools to communicate. I think it's effective, it works, it's really quite straightforward and easy to build networks using Twitter and using Twitter to post links to the other things you've done. So you can have written documents, you can have videos, you can have other stuff, blogs. Um, and Twitter provides a kind of spine or backbone holding all of that together so people can see the stuff that you're doing. So I think that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching. Hello Australia. Bye bye Australia. <laughs>